Hello everyone, this is Pamela from Design Wishes by Pamela, here to bring to you a very quick, fun, and easy project that you could put together for Father's Day. If you're not subscribing to my YouTube channel, please do so. Hit the subscribe button and click that bell so you'll never miss a video. For this project, I used mini wood palettes from the Dollar Tree store to create this desk this Father's Day desk caddy gift. It is super easy to put together and super quick. I used elements from Photo Plays, Cardstock, Die Cut Collection, and their paper collection, Man Card. And I'll show you the 12 by 12 collection a little later in the video. Like I said, this desk caddy is very easy to put together and very fun. So it's something that you can put together with your kids. I used a uh, three by three um, post-it notepad for this version of the caddy. And you can easily add pens or pencils to it. That's what I love about it. You just want to make a uh, bottom on the on the crate which I'll show you how to do and that way your pens and pencils or papers or whatever um, you decide to use for your design won't fall out. For this particular um, de design I used furniture repair markers and um, a lot of us have this around the house and they work great on these wood crates. Um, I happen to use the oak color for this crate and I'm showing that to you because it differs from the pen cap as you can see but um, super easy um, I imagine you could probably use Crayola markers with it as well or um, or permanent markers that's why this is really super versatile and easy I used my corner punch to make my photo mat in the back and I'm also going to be giving you measurements for um, all the elements so um, 3 and 1 16th by 3 and 9 16th uh, for that craft uh, photo mat. And then a 3 and 3 eighths by 3 and 3 eighths, 7 eighths, I'm sorry, for the black card stock. Um, and then I just used um, a mini binder clip to clip it onto the back. That way the photo could be changed out. So that makes it a, a little bit more um easier if you're switching out the photos or if the if the receiver is going to be switching out photos. Um, so this is what the uh, palettes look like. And again, they're about four inches square, approximately four inches square. So what I used on this version is my sponge dauber and Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Walnut Stain. And as you can see, the wood palette took the walnut stain distress ink quite nicely and it gives it a different look. So depending on what type of wood type you like, you can use any color, uh, any paint type. Uh, and you'll see another version that I actually use acrylic paint on. So you just connect the two palettes together as simple and easy as that. This version will feature a wood frame from Project Life. So Project Life has a collection of wood frames and uh, this is just one of them. I really like this set because not only does it have the graphics, you could see hugs and kisses with this one with the X and O's, it also has little short sayings as well. This is another card from that uh, cardstock die cut set from Photoplay, the man card. I'm going to be using that on this version of the project. You'll see the completed version of all the projects and you'll see how I put them all together. I just want to show you up front the different ones that, I, that I'm going to be putting together. Here is the glued finished base for your project. So you can see how one of the pallets is used as the base of the stand and, and it holds up the other pallet that is vertical. I did use well bond throughout this project, although you could use any kind of adhesive that will adhere wood together. I did try 
hot glue. I didn't like the hot glue because I was able to easily pull the two pieces apart after the glue had dried. I wanted something solid, so I used wood glue. You could also use Barely Arts glue. That works great too. So here's the third version that I'm going to be showing you in this video. And for this version, I used my go-to black Liquitex Mars Black acrylic paint. And I painted the palette pieces. Just the tip, it's best to do your decorating while the palette pieces are flat. Um, it's just a little easier when it's at an angle, you don't always get the perspective that you need. So I'm going to start with this black version of the uh, project. And for that, I added a key keeper. So I just used my um, paper piercer and I'm using a Tim Holtz Ideology Swivel Clasp as the key keeper. This makes a really fun key keeper. Uh, it locks in, in place so that it keeps the keys secure. Um, and then I'm just going to also use a tiny brad. You just wanna make sure the brad prongs are long enough that they go all the way through the back of the, the mini palette. So I'm carefully piercing the wood and the wood is soft enough where you're, you don't have to pry too hard. You can see I'm already through uh, that one piece of the palette. And then I'm going to apply adhesive into the hole to secure the brad. If you can get your fingers in there to open up the brad and, and clasp it, that's great. Uh, I'm using the adhesive as an extra security measure to make sure that brad does not fall off. So I'm just going to put a little bit of, of the uh, weld bond on there. The great thing also about weld bond, it dries clear. So uh, even though you're seeing it white there, uh, when it's dry, it will be nice and clear. So you want your brad to sit a little bit higher uh, off that palette so that you could put the ring of the swivel clasp through it and it could be removed and the user could just grab their keys and go. So um, I'm gonna show you a close up here where you could see that that brad sits about an eighth of an inch away from the base of the palette. And again, the glue will dry clear so it won't look messy uh, when it's dry. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, design the back of this palette. Um, and the back of the palette uh, is going to have a pocket. So to create the pocket, I used a two by four piece of craft cardstock. All of the cardstock I'm using in this video is Michael's Recollections brand. Then I took and scored it at a quarter of an inch on three sides. So you don't need two pieces, just one. I just put the illustration on two separate pieces. I'm going to snip the corners at an angle. This will help fold and score the creases nice and crisp and give you a nice squared off edges. So I'm just taking my scissors and I'm just snipping those corners. And then uh, I'm going to create a notch in the top of my pocket. And I like using my two by one and three eighths oval punch from Stampin' Up. I like a wider notch in my pocket uh, tops of my pockets, but you could use whatever um, circle punch you want to use. So you want to snip just a little bit and then you want to fold over your scored sides and, and burnish them down really well. I didn't have my, my, um, my bone folder handy, but you just want to uh, burnish those, corner those edges down and you see how you get a nice crisp point. It also takes away some of the bulk on your scored pieces. So then I'm gonna apply some adhesive glue on the three edges, and then I'm going to place that down on the wood palette. Again, I'm going to use my well bond, but uh, you wanna use a glue that will uh, adhere securely when it dries to the wood palette. So I'm just making sure that I don't have too much, but I have enough to make sure that it's gonna be 
stuck on there really well. And then I'm going to center the pocket on the bottom half of the palette. And then I'm going to burnish it down really well to make sure it's stuck on there. I can't stress that enough because I don't like my if my projects lift later. I want to make sure that if I'm gluing something down, it's going to stay down. And, and if you're giving this as a gift, you probably are conscientious about that when you're crafting as well. But for those of you who haven't done a project similar to this or, or, or know about burnishing, it really is important to burnish down your pieces so you don't have any lifting. So I'm a saver of everything and I keep all my scrap pieces of printer paper. And so I just grabbed a few sheets of printer paper scraps and um, they were already cut to three inches. So I just cut them down to three by three and three quarter inches and they fit perfectly in the pocket. And this will make great uh, note pieces, no note, note piece, can't speak right now, pieces of note paper for your desk caddy. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and I, I'm going to apply a glue. I'm going to be generous, but I'm going to be, in, not globs of glue. I'm only going to be applying glue to that inside edge of the other palette. And you can see where I'm, I'm going to be putting it in a, in a little bit. You just want to make sure wherever your base palette is going to sit, that it has glue on it so it sits securely. So I'm just going to add bead of glue straight across and then at the base of each of the inside posts and then at the top. You don't have to put a whole lot of glue. You don't need lots and lots and lots of glue, just in key strategic places to make sure that where the base palette sits, it has a good connection or good contact. So this is the top of my palette where the key keeper is that's going inside the palette that is sitting vertical where my pocket is for my note sheets, my little pocket for note sheet paper. You want to place something heavy but not too heavy on that base so that as it's drying, you know it's really uh, stuck onto um, the other palette. And you want to make sure that the edges are flush with one another. The good thing about these, I have quite a, quite a few of these and all of them are squared up nicely. I didn't have to sand down anything with these palettes from the Dollar Tree. So I just want to show you how the swivel clasp works. It just, you pinch it to open it and then you just pinch it and put it back into the clasp. It opens and closes very nicely. And then it, there again, my ring will sit there and then I can just lift off the, uh, the user can just lift off the key ring. That's why you want to leave that little eighth of an inch between the palette and the brad. And here's a key from my ephemera pack. I'm just showing you how super easy that is. And again, the user can just add their keys slip them on, slip them off, and they'll never lose their keys, right? Here is a cut apart that I use from the 12 by 12 paper collection from Photoplay, the man card paper collection. And here's what that 12 by 12 paper collection looks like. I actually made an album with this man card paper collection. You can copy that link to your browser. And I'm also going to put a link in the description box below. So I'm just going to take some glue and I'm going to adhere the card, which I did do very much trimming at all. So it fits perfectly on the base of my palette. I'm using barely art glue to do that. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of the card and then I'm going to adhere that down to the palette next to the key keeper. Really, I did not do that much trimming. I just trimmed it away from the 12 by 12 sheet 
uh, and it fits perfectly on this palette. And there you have it. Really, really super fun and cute. A pen, a pencil fits in there nicely. And again, I you would want to make sure that your palette is dry at least 24 hours or at least four or five hours to make sure it's really, really glued down. But for purposes of the video, I'm moving a little bit faster. So now let me show you um, an idea using the palette where I used the Distress Ink. Here's how I created the bottom so that the pens and pencils don't fall out. You first wanna determine what is going to be your bottom. And for this um, design, I just kept the bottom dye free, right? Color free. So I knew that was going to be my bottom. So choose that before you do this. Otherwise you'll have to rip that cardstock away. Anyway, I'm going to um, put some glue. I'm putting some glue right here on the base. I just took a scrap piece of cardstock and I it, it's a bigger bigger than the, the base and the reason why I did that if I cut it to the base I might get be off when I lay it down to be glued and I didn't want that to happen so if you use a piece that's a little bit bigger when the glue dries you can simply cut it away with scissors uh, or your craft knife and you'll see me do this in a, in a minute so it, it makes it much easier than trying to be exact from the beginning. You can trim it up nicely and you can see how it trims up nicely. The great thing about this project is you're using straight edges. There's nothing too complicated about it. For this version, you can see that there it isn't split in half like the palette here. What I did is I took my Dremel tool and I cut out that center post. And you could easily do this if you have a Dremel tool or very carefully with a wood chisel. And then it makes another place for a no paper holder or business cards holder. You could still stick the pins inside, um, but I just thought that was a fun way of altering the palette. So now what I'm going to do is um, show you that I added the uh, frame, the wood frame from Project Life. And then I like to use uh, my stamp uh, from May May Made It, the place photo here. I really love this stamp, especially if I'm making something to give to someone so that they have an idea of where they can place a photo or if I'm doing something for a craft fair or a giveaway, that way it get, it ha helps the receiver know where to place a photo. And I just use my Memento ink to uh, stamp that right onto the location where I want the, the, the receiver to put the photo. So let me go back and so show you how easy it is just to trim away. You just want to place your scissors right on the edge there of the palette and just trim away that cardstock. It's so much easier and then you're much more accurate uh, with trimming that up and you don't have to keep trimming and trimming and trimming. Again, you can use uh, a pair of scissors or you can use your craft knife. And there your base is closed and no pencils, no pens will fall out. Or if you're doing the other version, no note, note sheets will fall out. So again, I'm going to go ahead and glue the two pieces together and you'll get to see how I do it again because in case you missed it earlier, I'm just going to add the glue around to the sections where the other palette is going to touch. Just going to bring it a little bit closer for you to see. How I place the, the glue.
and you want to make sure the two edges are lined up flush. And let me just turn that a little bit so that you can see my two edges are flush. Another thing that you can do to secure your palettes together while they're drying is take some blue painter's tape or whatever brand painter's tape you have. You could probably use a really good washi tape to do this and just use the tape to hold the two pieces together while they're drying. You just want to make sure you keep those side edges flush. Again, that's what it should look like when it's dry. Again, nice and sturdy. So now what I'm going to do is take another um, card element from the cardstock um, die cuts from the man card collection and adhere that to the wood palette. Um, if you're not sure how, uh, how you're going to place the element onto the wood palette, you could always use a pencil and just make a reference mark so that you're hitting the wood slat with the glue that you're applying on the back of your element. And that's what I did there, just made a little mark. And so for this one, I just did the same thing. I created a photo mat, just like you seen early in the earlier um, part of the video. Um, I just punched my uh, photo corner cut out there and then my craft photo mat and I slipped it through the back, black cardstock. And then I'm going to attach it with a another binder, mini binder clip. And you can do the same thing too. You could use a uh, you could even use a mini clothespin if you want. You can get really creative with this project. That's why I like the fact that it's so quick and easy. I literally, uh, when I first put this together, I literally only took 20 minutes to put this together. So if you're last minute on a Father's Day gift and you just want something super quick, you can make this, put the gift card in the slot or make a pocket for the gift card and there you go. You have a fun way to give a gift to um, the dad that will be receiving this. And it's useful too. He can put it on um, the, the desk and use it all throughout the year. And again, if you do a photo, Matt, you can change the photos if you want. But it's a great way to present a gift card. And there you go. Your pencils slide in there nice and easily. Super cute, super fast, super fun. The great thing about it, you could just use scraps of your cardstock. You can use printed paper if you have it. Um, if you don't have any of the cut aparts or whatever, you can just download an image uh, from the internet. I wanted to show you on the black one, I did create a little label with some brads and layered cardstock to um, put a message if you if you wanted to or put the year if you wanted to um, again it fits really nicely onto the back of the palette i hope you like this video again if you're not subscribing please subscribe give me a thumbs up click that bell for notifications and thank you so much for watching